In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in, in what, what I, I have done, done and in, in what, what I have failed, failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my, fault, through through my, my most grievous fault. fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, teach us to forgive one another, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, with hope and light of the sincere, we humbly entreat you to dispose our hearts, to offer you worthy prayer, and ever to extol you by dutiful proclamation of your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up, ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time, and said to the Sanhedrin, Fellow children of Israel, be careful what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Theudas appeared, claiming to be someone important, and about 400 men joined him, but he was killed, and all those who were loyal to him were disbanded and came to nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean at the time of the census. He also drew people after him, but he too perished, and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men, and let them go. For if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. They were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged, ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus, and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And all day long, both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ Jesus, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. 
Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. Let us now stand to honor the Holy Gospel. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Proclamation for the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a, green, a, there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about 5,000 in number, then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they are going to come and carry him off to make him a king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If we look at our lives, if we look at our family, our community, and especially in the history of our church, the church has undergone countless trials and tribulations. When the Catholic Church was divided, Eastern and Western in 1054, many thought that it was the end of Christianity. When the Catholic Church was deteriorating because of corruption and immoral practices in the 16th century, or when the Reformation took place, many people again thought it was the end for, of the church. Or in the past de decades, we have seen and heard countless scandals. 
sexual scandals, money-related issues, clerical abuses, etc. We were shaken. That's why many of our brothers and sisters left the Catholic Church. They thought other religion and denominations are better. I will not lie, but still, there are many scandals in the church. Even politics is very strong in the church. There is too much division and hypocrisy among us church people, including us priests and religious. But are you not amazed? Even with all the trials of the church, we, the church, experience and encountered still the Catholic Church still exists and still is standing. Do you know why? Because our beloved church is not just any human institution. Listen, in our first reading today, where a person named Gamaliel said, if this church is of human origin, it will break up on its accord. It will die automatically. But look, our church is still standing and existing. And our gospel passage today confirms it. Jesus was busy serving and ministering to people. And in today's gospel, the Lord and His disciples fed thousands of people. 5,000 men, excluding their wives, the other women, children, and the elderly. So if you look at our church compared to other human institutions, the Catholic Church is the biggest institution in terms of charity. And in doing charity, no names are attached to it. Unlike if you go to the barangay, to the city hall, or congress, charity is always attached to the person of the politician. So for our further reflection, let's have two points. First, we are given the mission to feed, which means it is our mission to give and share. I believe this is one of the best reasons why the Catholic Church still exists despite all the scandals and tribulations. Our mission is a heavenly mandate. It comes from Jesus. It does not come from any human person. It comes from the Lord. Second, five loaves and two fish you know, brothers and sisters, when we have less, it is very easy to spiritualize and rationalize that it's okay not to give. Eh, wala na nga ako, kukunti na nga, meron ako, magbibigay pa ako. Or it's easy to defend that we ourselves are in need, so we cannot give. But take note, the boy only had five loaves and two fish. And yet, he offered it. Brothers and sisters, instead of keeping, hoarding, or accumulating everything, there is much joy in giving and sharing. Believe me, there is more joy in sharing. 
So brothers and sisters, we cannot just sit in a classy restaurant. We cannot just travel every quarter of the year by simply enjoying what we have. The truth is, our blessings are given to us not to simply enjoy them. They are given to us basically to be shared. That's why they are called blessings. They are given to us so others may also benefit from them. Five loaves and two fish, no matter how little we share, it is always big for someone who is in need. Last week, or less than two weeks ago, I went to a certain hospital. There is a child still in need of financial help for his two very important procedures, namely, eight hours EEG monitoring and whole exome sequencing. Mahal daw yan. So I messaged my friends and I collected 15,000. It's not much, but it's not much because of the big amount they need for such procedures. But no matter how little it is, whatever is given and shared is always big for someone who is very much in need. So nagbigay ako ng 15,000. Lumingon ako sa kabila, meron ding pasyente. So napilitan din akong nagbigay ng 1,000 from my allowance. Nabawasan yung allowance ko pa. Maybe today, we can also share some of our loaves and some of our fish. And this is the reason why the Catholic Church is, is alive and is standing. Jesus gave us this mission to share our loaves and two fish to those in need. And so I end this way. When I was in the college seminary, I have a friend, a kababayan and a fellow seminarian from Tugigaraw. Taga Tugigaraw po ako. We were classmates. Once a week, we would go for snacks together at the canteen. If it is his turn, he would buy sandwich and soda for us. And when it's my turn, I would say, oh, Pasensya ka na, Wesley. Tubig at cup noodles lang kaya ng budget ko. You know, if we share, kahit konti lang, kahit very little, believe me, kung tatanggapin yun ng nangangailangan, matutuwa yun. If we share, matutuwa sila at magagalak sila. So today, I encourage you, share your loaves, share your fish. That's why it's called blessing. We have to share it. Amen. Please all stand. Jesus multiplied loaves and fish on the mountain to feed the hungry multitude. Let us pray for the needs of the hungry and the poor and for their strength to come to their assistance. In every petition we say, Lord, give us our daily bread. Lord, give us our daily bread. For our holy church that may even be more strengthened by the Spirit of God, that the ministers of our church may feed without fail the people of God in the table of the Word, in the table of the Lord's body, we pray. Lord, give us our daily bread, that government and civil agencies may attend to the people's need for food, 
shelter, and security. We pray. Lord, give us our daily bread. Like the boy who offers five barley loaves and two fish, may we be generous with our little resources, which the Lord will multiply to answer the needs of many. We pray. Lord, give us our daily bread. As we pray for those who are hungry, may the Lord touch our hearts and open our hands to feed them. We pray. Lord, give us our daily bread. We also remember to pray for the victims of human trafficking, especially women and children, and for all victims of drug abuse for their rehabilitation. We pray. Lord, give us our daily bread. May we thank the Lord for the gift of food that restores our strength for those who work to produce what we eat and for those who prepare it at table. We pray. Lord, give us our daily bread. We now pray for our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, give us our daily bread. Father, open our eyes that we may see the deepest needs of men, women, and children. Teach us the generosity that welcomes the hungry, the thirsty, the strangers, and those who suffer in any way. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual journey. Blessed be God forever. Pray with me, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept in compassion, O Lord, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the angel, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Ernesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her blessed spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to our apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of their church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the blessing of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Brothers and sisters, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. Let us go now in peace. Thanks be to God.